So I am playing Darkest Hour or Hearts of Iron game. Something that I'm not actually going to get through an entire playthrough of a game here for the sake of this episode. I just kind of want to play a little bit of this game because I happen to like real-time strategy games. And this is one that I keep falling my way back to. Now this is a sort of expanded version of the game Hearts of Iron 2, which I've actually played more of than Darkest Hour. Darkest Hour, I've always sort of played it as a kind of um, World War I simulator as opposed to World War II. But I'm playing a World War II, um, playing a World War II scenario here because it's, I don't know, haven't done it much. So I'd like to see how it works out. So I'm playing as the United States starting in 1936. And you have until, in this version of the game anyway, 1966 to win World War II. Now, you do actually kind of have to win this war better than what historically occurred. Because you're going to have three sides, essentially. You have the Allied powers, so we're talking about, like, the United States, um, Great Britain, and all that. But, um, the British Empire, rather. You also have the Axis powers, mostly, like, Germany, Italy, some of the other... Uh, lesser belligerents in that side. Then you also have the communists. Now, the Soviet Union kind of played both sides during this war, but for the most part, the Soviet Union was actually part of the Allies fighting against Germany and Italy. And eventually against Japan, but that came much later in the war. But as far as this game goes, you actually have the Soviet Union, or the, the communists anyway, playing as a third faction. Now, they're going to work on your side during the war, but you actually kind of have to prevent the Soviet Union from taking over the eastern half of Europe. So what happened in real life was as um, the Normandy invasion occurred, you had most of the Allied powers pushing eastward. The Soviet Union overran the German defenses and pushed westward. And by the time that everybody met up, the Soviet Union had made it as far as Berlin. And that was really unfortunate for everybody who lived in the eastern end of Europe because the Soviets basically gained control. They already had their military in the, those positions. It was a little bit hard to dislodge them without going into what essentially would have been World War III in the 1940s. So, a lot of people blamed um, Franklin Roosevelt for basically giving Stalin Eastern Europe, but the reality was Stalin had already taken Eastern Europe by that point. His military was already there. There was no dislodging them without another war, as unfortunate as that may have been. But you have to win the war because better than what historically happened because at the end of the game, it will sort of add up points. So each area has these different provinces. Now, every province has a certain value to it. Um, things having resources are worth more than provinces that don't. And whoever has the most points based on the provinces they have wins. The Soviet Union are going to gain an ass load of points taking over the eastern end of Europe. Not to mention all of this territory. A lot of it's kind of not very good, but there's a lot of it. The Soviet Union controls an ass load of territory, vastly more than, say, the United States does. Even though, like, Alaska adds quite a bit to the American territory. But anyway, you've got to win the war better than what really happened. And that can be uh, that can be a little bit difficult. Now this game, I know I called this a real-time strategy, but it looks, it only looks like a turn-based strategy because of the scale of the world. Now this is kind of where it differs from a lot of other real-time strategy games like StarCraft or WarCraft or Command and Conquer. Those games I think 
could probably more realistically be described as real-time tactics games as opposed to real-time strategy games because a lot of the stuff you, you're relying on are like tactical maneuvers, placements of troops, all that kind of stuff. Uh, position on positions and all that kind of stuff. In this, you have very, very little in the way of tactical control over anything since everything is um, so high, like you're viewing everything from miles high. You're not going to be positioning your troops in every province. Like, here I have these uh, cavalry and two infantry divisions in Columbus. So, it's Ohio split up into a number of different provinces, but Columbus is just one. Now, I can't position troops here and troops here and troops here. It's all just in that province, and they are going to fight based on their own sort of AI and all that kind of stuff. I can influence tactical behavior to an extent through the tech tree, but I'll get to that a little bit. But really, you have no direct control over a tactical side of battles. It's all strategic from your perspective anyway. So when I, when I eventually hit go, it'll start ticking away time in real time. And you can adjust the speed faster or slower. Before the war starts, I'm basically going to be running it as fast as I can. Because the game will take fucking forever based on normal speed. But once the war gets started, you're going to want to run it at normal speed. Just to be able to react to what is going on. Because, like, battles will start and end so quickly at maximum speed that you won't even know that they happen sometimes. You'll just get a dialogue box saying, oh, you won or you lost, and you won't necessarily know why. It'll be hard to track even where it occurred. But if you slow the game down, you can get to where it's going. You can watch the battle play out. You can see how your forces are faring against theirs. You know, it's uh, kind of necessary information for you to be able to tell what's going on. Now, all of your units you have, and I'm using units in the video game sense of individual um, items. You don't control individual soldiers. Everything that you control is, at the least, based on the division level. So here's a marine division. Here's another marine division, and there's a fighter wing. So it's not one plane that's a wing of fighters. That's not one soldier, that's a division. So you can group them together, but basically the individual division is the smallest number of you know, of soldiers that you can command. Uh, the one exception to this is um, in like large, tactically and strategically significant things, such as battleships or aircraft carriers, can be controlled individually. So this is a fleet here. And it's made up of a number of different ships, but see here the USS Nevada, the Arizona, and the Pennsylvania are all individual units. From a gameplay perspective, I can detach them and have them operate on their own. Of course, a battleship has over a thousand people on it. An aircraft carrier has over a thousand people on it. So that's the reason why it's not... It's not like an individual soldier. There's a lot of people on it. And it's also big and expensive. When you get down to cruisers, it's the same thing. Destroyer divisions, I'm going to make an assumption that the... Uh, I'm not entirely sure of this, but I'm pretty sure they... Oh, see, yeah, here we go. It even says so. These destroyer divisions are made up each of five destroyers apiece. A destroyer being a much smaller uh, warship than a battleship or a carrier or a cruiser. So you have the map. You have... I'm playing as the United States, so... Here's the continental U.S. You have Alaska here, which was a territory at the time. Uh, you have Hawaii, which was a territory. You have a bunch of these islands. Johnston, Midway. Here's Wake. Um, what have we got? Guam down here. And you have the Philippines, which... Um, you know, I'm trying to remember... Historically, the Philippines was granted independence from the United States at some point. By 1936, had that happened yet? I'm not sure. But the Philippines do possess their own military here. 
but you kind of have military control over it. So here is a Philippine division, two Philippine divisions. I basically control, oh, actually only one of these is actually a legitimate Philippine division, but I have military control over it. I also have control over their islands, meaning their air bases, their uh, ports, all the provinces, that kind of shit. So I control the Philippines, even though it's a separate country. So I guess maybe the Philippines were granted independence by then? Because they have their own military. And the Philippines did have a president at the time. Or prime minister, or whatever the fuck they called their head of state. Um, you know, I don't know. My historical knowledge is limited on account of being a dumbass. But anyway... Let's jump through the, the tabs up here. Intelligence. Now, there's a lot of, uh, like, spy funding and all that kind of stuff that you can have in this. I honestly, I don't, I don't like playing around with that in this game. So, I'm just going to go auto-spying. Let the game's AI sort of take control of that. The tech tree, on the other hand, is something that we'll be paying a lot of attention to. And it's something that, um, mostly this window is going to stay open constantly during the run-up to World War II, or at least the United States' involvement in World War II. You have a number of different tech teams on the left side. Now, this is um, seven tech trees, seven tech teams. I think only five is in the base game, Hearts of Iron 2. Now, so we have seven, so you get a little bit more freedom to research some shit. And you have a bunch of different tech trees up here that you can focus on. So, infantry... So you have regular infantry, light mountain, marine, motorized cavalry, supply logistics, combat engineers, and airborne infantry. Armor and artillery, so you've got tanks of various types, light, medium, heavy, you know, armored cars, artillery, anti-air, anti-tank, self-propelled artillery, rocket artillery, anti-air brigades, naval you have different types, light cruisers, battleships, battle cruisers, heavy cruisers, anti-submarine warfare equipment, destroyers, subs, light carriers, troop ships, um, fleet carriers, and torpedoes and troop ships. I already said troop ships. <laughs> Aircraft, fighters, close air support, tactical bombers, strategic bombers, blah, 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 seaplanes, carrier air group, and air transports. Industrial, which is a, an important one in the early game, involves a lot of things like um, a, a production lines, engineer, construction engineering, um, resource extraction, things like radar, uh, computing, computing, encryption and decryption, agriculture, medicine, and atomic uh, research. Uh, well, we have oil, synthetic oil research also. Also, uh, equipment to help your soldiers' um, movement and defense. Now beyond that, when we get out of straight, oh, we have secret weapons here, which I can't actually research any of this stuff. Once you research to the end of tech trees, otherwise you can get in here like atomic weapons, computing, uh, atomic powered warships, um, surface air missiles, um, jet engines, that kind of shit, ballistic missiles, may not ever make it this far. Aside from technology, you have Doctrine. Now, this is kind of the only tactical control you have over any of your units, really. It allows a lot of things... It, it more or less are just modifiers to the tactical capability of your different units. So, let's say you have Delay Doctrine. Now, this increases your organization by 7%, uh, Muddy Defense by 3%, uh, Plains Defense by 3%, Desert Defense 1%, Lots of little things that modify the capacity to uh, kill or defend or whatever. Attack, defend, retreat, move, whatever. You have land doctrines. You have air doctrines over here. So escort box, maximum strength organization, all that kind of stuff. You also have naval over here. So something that I've occasionally done was... I researched the technologies that I needed, but not the doctrines. So I would have powerful, um, like say, infantry units, 
but poor doctrine. So they would get crushed because they simply didn't, um, they didn't have the proper doctrine to increase their stats and all that kind of stuff. So I'd get routed and destroyed. So doctrine is important. And this other stuff we don't really have to worry about. So, um, as far as technology goes, there's a few things that you, uh, when it comes to researching technologies, there's a few things that you want to make note of. One, don't do a lot of time researching future technologies because there's sort of a, there's a modifier in your research speed when it comes to what you can research, when you can research it and all that kind of stuff. So look at, looking at this, we have every one of these uh, ship designs here have a historical year in which they were researched. So say for battleships here, we have improved battleship 1934. That'd be the North Carolina class. It obsoletes the Tennessee class, which is a little ways back. There it is. Has a historical year of 1934. Now it's already researched, so we don't have to worry about it. But since it's 1936 right now, two years past, you have a research modifier of two years, which allows you to research that faster. Now, if you research something in the current year, like 1936, is there anything here in 1936? Nope, not a damn thing. Oh, here we go. Troop ship, 1936. This is uh, more or less just no research modifier, so you can research that at the normal speed instead of a high accelerated speed. But if you research some kind of future tech, like Battleship 1939, which is the Iowa-class battleship, you're going to have a, a research modifier which slows your research, which is unfortunate because um, you kind of want to... It, it prevents you from beelining your way towards more advanced technologies like atomic weapons or uh, like the B-29 bombers or something like that. You gotta work your way through and you gotta be patient with it. Now, that doesn't mean that I am not going to ever research any future texts. In fact, I will definitely research a few future texts, but I'm not, um, not gonna spend all my time researching them because, well, it's a waste of time. So, what am I going to do research initially? Now, I'm gonna go into industrial because. A few things I want to make sure I get as quickly as possible. <sighs> Fuck you. I want to make sure that I get a few uh, industrial things as quickly as possible. Assembly line experimentation. Now, this is a future tech. 1940. But it is such a good one that I honestly, I feel like it's worth it to research it early. Because something that you want to research as quickly as possible are actual assembly lines, like ship assembly lines. Warships take an ass load of time to build, much more than planes or, or army units or anything like that. So you want to get this technology researched as quickly as possible. So I'm going to re assembly line experimentation. Now looking down at the bottom, you have what it is is ne what is needed in order to research this tech. So we have seven units of technical efficiency, seven of management, seven of industrial engineering, a further eight of industrial engineering, and another 14 of management. So we're going to go find a tech team which is got all of those things. What do you know? The Ford Motor Company is sitting at the top of our list. It's got management, industrial engineering, and technical efficiency, everything we need, and also a skill of nine. So this is basically the best we can choose. I'm gonna put Ford Motor Company there, and I'm gonna start this project. Now that's gonna tick along once the game starts rolling. Um, computing, this is a future tech, but only by a year. Computing machines will accelerate your research. So, uh, accounting machine uh, improved research modifier plus eight percent. So, hey, awesome. Let's choose that. It's a future tech, but not by much. So we have 
Uh, six in mathematics, six of electronics, six for mechanics, another six for mechanics, and 12 for management. Well, what do we have up here? General Electric and Raytheon, as well as IBM, are good for this. Now, General Electric only has a skill of seven, whereas Raytheon has a skill of eight, and IBM has a skill of eight. But Raytheon has mechanics, which there's a full 12 points needed for this, whereas IBM doesn't, whereas IBM does have mathematics. A anyway, Raytheon is the best choice here. You get why. Basic computing machine. Also, industrial, I'm going to want to start... Um, where, where is... Uh, I'm going to get synthetic oil later, but I'm definitely going to do it. Uh, atomic research. Do you want to build bombs? I want to build atomic bombs. Why? Atomic bombs are fucking awesome in this game. They can swing a freaking war as soon as you get them. And a lot of the times I play through this, an atomic bomb is not quite in the way it historically worked out, but it is what allows me to win the war against Japan. Now, you don't really have anybody good to research this, so I have Layman Briggs here. He's got only a skill of five, but he's the only one with nuclear physics, and there's a lot of points of nuclear physics. Fortunately, this is not a future tech, so I can start research immediately. Now, something else I'm going to jump into for the following four teams is I'm going to start researching... Um, I'm going to start researching naval technologies, because... Um, it's, while it is possible to, once the war starts, to continue building up your navy, and historically that actually did happen. The United States did build an assload of, of aircraft carriers once the war started. Reality is that it takes so long to build a lot of these things that you kind of want to already have them under construction by the time the war starts. And the United, playing as the United States, I'm going to be locked into a rather fierce naval battle with Japan once the war gets going. And the navy that I have in place now is simply not going to cut it. I mean, maybe I could if I was really smart with positioning and, and uh, all that. And I allowed the British to carry some of the burden there. But you're kind of going to want to go and throw some tech into naval research right away so i'm a little torn here about what i want to build because you have not you have the semi-modern battleship which is the iowa class and then you have the super heavy battleship which is the montana class this doesn't really make any sense historically because i think both ships are actually designed at the same time the montana class was never built the iowa class was the Montana was supposed to be a more powerful version of the Iowa, but it was slower. More firepower, more armor, didn't move as fast. So it doesn't really make any sense to me that the one has like 7, 37, 39. Hey, what's the, um, why do these two, <laughs> whatever. Also, uh, they require the same tech same uh, requirements but one is just one is just um a further model year by two freaking years in this game you don't actually it actually doesn't really make a hell of a lot of sense to build battleships because i mean historically what ended up being the case or that wasn't really known at the time was that battleships were a little bit of an obsolete concept. They still had their function during the war, but it was mostly a support or um, shore bombardment. But, you know, they're awesome, so I'm going to build some battleships. I just don't know whether I'm going to try to build um, super heavies or Iowas or semi-moderns. Uh, you know what? I haven't really done it before, so I'm going to try, I'm going to build the uh, semi-modern battleship, the Iowa class. So I've got these various um, shipyards here. Newport News has got a skill of eight, but it is missing the six points needed for electronics. So I'm going to put New York Naval Yard here, let them do it. I'm also going to put more research into improved aircraft carrier. 
Now, we have the uh, Yorktown class. This, I guess, is an improved version of the Yorktown class. And it's if I can get this constructed, it's going to be the ship that I class of ship that I'm going to build the most of. So, Newport News. What do you know? Carrier design. Perfect. Jump back in the naval. Um, it's a future tech. This will actually be a pretty easy one to construct, to research, because it's an old tech. Uh, light carriers. So, I'm going to jump on that. This will complete fairly quickly. And... You know, you want not just to have your ships, but you if you're going to have aircraft carriers, you're going to want aircraft. So, carrier air group, it's a future tech, but only by a year. Uh, carrier air group, nobody really has got that great. So, Douglas, Douglas Aircraft, I'm going to have them do it. So, that's all of my tech, my, uh, tech teams right now are working on shit. Economy. This is another important one, and this is where we're going to spend the other half of all my time working. You have a number of things that you have to pay attention to with economy. God, I haven't even started the game yet. You have... Over here is where you need to be looking at a lot. Now you have consumer goods, production, supplies, reinforcements, and upgrades. Uh, the most important of these especially before the war, is actually consumer goods. Because what you have up here at the top is your dissidence rating. Once dissidence gets over like 10% or something like that, no, I'm sorry, 15%, I think, you start to run the risk of rebellions occurring and you getting these small civil wars in your country. And that will result in a lot of um, your territories being lost and then you have to go and militarily take them back. So you want to make sure that your consumer goods, the need right now is 110, there's only 70 allocated to it. Not nearly enough. So what you want to do, and for some reason the game doesn't always do this, is you want to have industrial capacity checked for auto control. So right now it's throwing enough, and the more you're, you're over your number of 110.25, the faster your dissident rating will drop. Production is also a very important one, especially pre-war, because this is going to be um, like what you can actually build. So right now we only need 12.53 and the thing is auto assigned 12.53. Supplies, uh, that's going to like for keeping your soldiers in supplies so they continue to fight and all that kind of stuff. Needs 9.93. It's getting zero right now. Reinforcements. Needs 37.44. It's only getting 30.16. And upgrades. Needs 32.75. It's getting zero. I am going to disable upgrades and reinforcements. Because I don't want them to get anything pre-war. Now I will have to make sure I uncheck this prior to the war starting. Or once the war starts, so everything can get upgraded. But you'll see why in a second. Why I don't want these things happening. Because here, next to this, you have all of your various resources. Now, as the United States, I don't actually have to worry about a lot of these. Energy, more than enough energy. Metal, more than enough ener uh, metal. Rare materials, I'll have enough. Oil, I'll have enough. Supplies, I'll have enough. Money, most of the time I will have enough. But what I will not have is manpower down at the bottom. Now, when you upgrade something to a... Or, uh, or reinforce or upgrade something, it is going to draw from your pool of manpower. Now, I only have 102, and I'm getting 0, 0.00 per day. That is not any... Not enough. 102, I'm going to need hundreds of thousands to win this war, not 102. Now, there's certain choices I can make which will boost manpower, but not really until the war starts am I going to have a massive influx of manpower. So I got to be very judicious with what I use uh, my manpower on prior to the war starting. So, 
allowing upgrades and reinforcements to occur will draw, will siphon off manpower. I don't want that. I don't want manpower to get pulled away. I want manpower to stay here so I can continue to build things with it. Once the war starts, I'll recheck reinforcements and upgrades, allowing that stuff to happen. In general, because the United States is largely isolated from the rest of the belligerents of the war, you don't have to worry about you getting slammed immediately with um, vicious attacks and your and your units won't be caught off guard without upgrades, except for in the Philippines, maybe like Wake Island, stuff like that, you might have a problem. But I'll probably get to it in, in enough time to not have to worry too much about that. Now over here, you have your production lines. Now this is all where our production need of 12.53 is coming from. It's also where some of our manpower is being siphoned off of. You have a lot of ships in production, pretty much it's nothing but ships in production. You have two aircraft carriers, Yorktown Enterprise, some heavy cruisers, uh, some bunch of more light cruisers, some destroyer divisions, and submarines. Now, I don't really want all of these ships, because remember, they are drawing manpower away from my pool. So I'm going to go down to these light cruisers, and the four down here that are furthest away from completion, I'm going to eliminate them and return their manpower pool to the, uh, so I was 102.25 and I'm 104.25. I'll be able, those ships, I'm going to be build, uh, researching better technology for these later. And light cruisers and destroyers and all of that can be built much faster later. It also reduced the need for uh, industrial capacity for production, so it's only 10.75 is needed anymore. I don't want to have to... I want to be able to put these into things I build later, because I will be man power constrained all the way up until the beginning of the war. I want to use it more judiciously. Now, uh, the carriers are going to be useful, so I'm going to keep then these heavy cruisers, except for this one here, the Wichita. I'll get rid of that one. These are pretty damn close to completion. So, 89.72%, uh, 73.24%. They're so close, I'll just let them go. Um, these destroyers, 95 and 90%. They're, they're damn close. Oh, here's the, the Boise. You want to get rid of that? So, I'm going to let these ships finish. And then I will uh, add a few other ones. So, you have, here's your different types of ships you can build. Here's, here's different types of planes you can build, and here are your divisions, you know, infantry, garrison, militia, mountain, marines, cavalry, cavalry, and HQ. I'm going to not be training much in the way of that early in the game. I'm going to be mostly spending my time building up my navy, because it's the longest lead item in the game. It takes longer to build a battleship than anything else. Longer to build a uh, carrier than anything else. But anyway, you can see here North Carolina class battleship. Um, it takes 1,917 days to develop. A long ass time. So I'm going to build a couple of those. And I'm going to attach some of these brigade things. Yep. This will actually, if I put torpedoes on there, it'll actually reduce maximum firing distance for some reason. So I'm not going to put torpedoes on there. I'm going to build a parallel run of three of these because I want to make sure I have at least a few new battleships ready for the war once it starts. So it's going to cost... It's going to take 1,917 days, require industrial capacity of 7, and 5.5 manpower to construct. Boom. Started that. Now, I'm not going to 
start building any more carriers because I want my newer gen carriers rather than my older carriers. So I will go over here though and I will build a couple of divisions. Now garrison divisions are kind of useful in this game because although they're useless for actually attacking an enemy, they're pretty useful for defending positions. And knowing what historically occurred during the war, I know that the Japanese are going to attack the Philippines and they're going to hit it pretty hard. You know what? You know, I'm not going to do garrisons. I'm just going to do regular um, infantry divisions. Now, these are going to require 13 manpower. That's a lot. I'm not going to not going to be able to build a lot of these. So I'm going to build four parallel production runs of infantry. What I'm going to do is once they are eventually finished, I am going to ferry them to the Philippines where they're essentially, or well, the Philippines as well as like Wake Island and uh, all of that. I'm going to build a couple of garrisons too. So that's most all of my manpower used up there. <laughs> so the, the infantry divisions are going to go to the Philippines. The garrisons are going to go to some of these specific islands that I want to be able to defend. I'm also going to ferry like my troops from Pearl Harbor here, as well as some of the ones on the west coast of the United States out there to defend these islands. Because I know the Japanese are never going to make their way across the ocean to attack the American mainland if I put any effort into this at all so diplomacy i am not going to do a lot of this i don't really care about diplomacy in this game i'm just going to let the game control that but um, you will get some bizarre outcomes like once i actually had uh, a civil war occur in germany and north germany split off from south germany north germany allied with me south germany uh allied with um or the uh, Central Powers. This is a World War One scenario, and <laughs> it, it was it was weird. But weird shit like that can happen. So let's get let's unfreeze time. So it's running at basic standard speed right now. So you can see every day that ticks off, your various design teams are progressing slowly in the direction of finishing. So improved light carrier is the one that's progressing along the fastest because that's an outdated technology. Um, whereas, say, assembly line experimentation, being a future tech, is still at 0% after three days. Same thing with the basic computing machine because it's a future tech only by a year, but still a future tech. So now it's at 0.2%, whereas improved light carriers at 82 already. Uh, let's speed time up because this is crazy slow. Boom, look at that. Days are going by in a sec one and a half seconds or so. But it's going to be hard to keep up with all the shit that's going on. So all, a lot of it I'm not even going to be paying attention to. Oh, one other thing I forgot to mention was you have these uh, decisions that can be made. Now, I can't actually do any of these yet. Oh, look at this. Theoretical breakthrough secret weapons. Techs for uh, rocket technology and all that kind of shit. Those are super weapons. Secret weapons, whatever. I can't do anything with them yet. You have these different decisions that you can choose, and a lot of them like increase dissident rating or or increase manpower or something like that. Uh, these all have the red X's, so I can't actually do any of this stuff yet. Okay, improved light carrier tech has been developed, and one of our ministers died. I can't say I give a damn. So Norfolk Naval Yard has completed their research on light carriers now uh light carriers are let's go nah let's research the better technology for torpedoes 
It's an old tech. Um, jumping into economy, we have light carriers, and you have um, basic light carrier. Is this what we just researched? <laughs> Experimental light carrier and basic light carrier. CVE and CVL. Uh, Langley class of CVE. Two. Well, whatever. Jeez, my mouse is wandering all over the place. Light carriers are much less capable than fleet carriers, but they can be built much faster. They require less manpower. So you can build an ass load of them. In fact, historically, a lot of light carriers and escort carriers were built. So Langley was basically a useless carrier. It, uh, I don't know what class this is supposed to be. It doesn't say. But basic light carrier is a little bit better. So that's why we have a little bit of manpower here. 21 point it's actually building i'm actually getting a manpower build up a little surprised by that let's go and build some light carriers each one will require 1.1 manpower so i'm going to build five of these fucking things uh, research mod modifier free market stimulates research research modifier 0.1 we also get technology blueprint for semi-modern destroyer carrier air group um carrier air group 37 and dissident is changed by negative one let's take a look at what that means so we were researching carrier air group already so once you get even though it was a future tech we were progressing along but once you get a blueprint that means research increases at a faster space. So look at that now. It's speeding along faster than it was before. Even though it's still a future tech, it's we've got blueprints. So we're getting it done faster. We also got blueprints for this 37 era destroyer, which I guess I will, once I get the a tech team available for it, I will research that. Although I was not actually planning on researching destroyer tech until later on, because destroyers can be built faster, you know. But whatever. It doesn't take too long to actually build a destroyer. So it was the kind of thing that I wasn't really going to be putting a lot of time into building until right before or even maybe after the war had started. I can turn destroyers around pretty quickly. Let us take a look at, uh, oh, I can create public works. All right, so money devaluation of public works. Here we go. Let's try this. Create a public works uh, group. Incre uh, decreases dissident by two, but costs us $6,000, I guess. <laughs> 6,000 units of whatever money it is. Uh, we move towards this. Uh, new industries created, event for USA. I'm going to do it. It's going to cost us almost all of our money, but we'll get money back. The United States generally remains solvent. Eventually, that will play out. Um, improved air carrier is almost done researching. Franklin Roosevelt, elected president. All right, so I'm going to pause time because our torpedo research is completed. Um... Let's do that destroyer, I guess, because we have the blueprints. I'm going to stick on this screen a little bit until... Uh, okay, bank run. Production of agency, negative three. Distant change by plus three. Oh, God, that sucks. Let us start researching a little bit because infantry technology we don't really have a good tech team for infantry but fortunately we can do a lot of research because 1921 yeah you know, it's 1936 right now we can get way forward on this 
I'm just going to stick around in this for a little bit because improved aircraft carrier is finished. Um, that's a future tech. That's uh, ignore that troop ship. Build a better troop ship. Boom. Now let's do a little bit of troop movement. Now you can't just tell soldiers to march across the ocean. I mean, I guess you, maybe you could, but they're not going to do it. You need to have transports. Now, where are my transports? They're here somewhere. 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 <laughs> somewhere. There we go. Three transports. So I'm going to take these infantry divisions. This is a, these are garrisons. I'm going to take these and load them up into the transports. And I'm going to send them all the way out here to the Philippines for a, uh, damn it. All right. So I need to, I'm going to rebase them over here. It'll have the same effect. I don't have to worry about escorting them because I'm not at war. No one's going to sink my ships. But if I were at war, taking them across Japan here it would be terribly dangerous. I would, they would get sunk. I would lose my, I would lose my troop ships. I'd lose my soldiers. So it would be a mistake. I need more transports. I'm going to rebase this one up to San Francisco. And then that's not enough. Basic computing machine research complete. So I'm immediately going to research improved computing machine, even though it's a future tech. And I'm going to keep the same research team on it. So I am now going to, I'm going to split this up because they're all organized together under one general. I'm going to, I only have three transports here. So I'm going to pop two of these off. I'm going to load them up. I'm going to get them over to the Philippines as well. Of course, they don't have that kind of range, so I'll have to rebase them here. And I'm going to send these back over. Now you can't send one of the, the irritating things about this game is it kind of prevents you from it kind of prevents you from building up a enormous force in the Philippines to defend it because you'll run out of like logistical support. You won't have the oops. You won't have the infrastructure to support a whole lot of soldiers in the Philippines. So you want to build up your defenses there, but you don't want to overdo it because you'll shoot yourself in the foot. All right. So what, what was built here? This was, um, this wasn't troop ship. Was it? This was destroyers. Oh, destroyers. What year is it? 1937. Submarines, torpedoes, anti-submarine warfare. Eh, I don't know. Battle cruisers are not. Um, the United States never built any battle cruisers, not really, anyway. So I don't. I'm probably not going to either. <laughs> Let's get over to armored and artillery. Let's start building up some artillery technology, because this will take a while. To, to get to the point where I can build modern tanks. Oh, this dude's almost built done with his uh, atomic research. Oh, okay. That was infantry. Keep it, keep it rolling, bro. Even though I'm researching the technology, just because I researched better infantry technology doesn't mean all of my infantry divisions immediately get that tech. In fact, they have to be upgraded using manpower and all that kind of stuff beforehand, which eh, 
I'm not going to spend that money on right away. Relations with Japan. Huh. Okay, that sucks. Pittman Chinese Currency Act. You can choose what happens here. It gives you some money. Americans control Chinese army. I'm not going to do that. Money devaluation. People aren't going to like that, but we're okay. Technology, economy. Oh, wait. My new um, aircraft carrier technology was up. Oh, troop shipped. Technology finishes fast. Armored, uh, armored cars. Springfield Armory. Place. Have the Marine Corps research marine technology. Who would have thunk it? Oh, shit. What am I doing? Uh, those new aircraft carriers. The improved um, Yorktown class. Oh, yeah. Free market stimulates research, research modifier, interceptors, and basic armored car. Awesome. I'm actually researching basic armored cars, so I got the, got the stuff for that. Where, where's my, uh, improved carrier, whatever the hell. Let's see what the difference is here. Sea attack, convoy attack, air attack. Although, higher naval vulnerability and air vulnerability uses more supplies. Longer range, though. Overall, I'd say this is better. Production of four of those. Uh, in the era between World War I and World War II, especially at the end of World War I, there was this huge concern that there was going to be this out-of-control arms race that would occur between the major naval powers of the world. So you had the British, which historically, and for quite a number of years, hundred-some years, had maintained the... Um, maintained the most what you could basically consider to be the most powerful navy in the world but something had happened in the 30 years leading up to world war one and that was naval technology had advanced or actually maybe like the 50 years or so leading up to it which was the technology for warships had advanced so quickly that while you could in like the age of sail say that well uh, like the hms victory um uh wooden ship of the line that the british had took part in the battle of trafalgar in fact i think it was uh horatio nelson's flagship during that battle that ship was pretty fucking old during that fight but it was still like as far as the technology goes and all that still a very effective combat unit very effective in that fight. Uh, first, uh, first class ship of the line. It could crush almost anything it faced. It was like 50 years old at the time. But when we're looking at World War One, like I said, 1915 or so, something that was built in 1960 or 1865, 50 years old, hopelessly obsolete. Like, why the hell would you even bring that into a battle obsolete? Because technology had started evolving much faster than it had in the thousands of years before then. So, the British were faced with a problem that they had to start constantly rebuilding their navy to keep everything up to date. So you're not just uh, loaded up with a whole bunch of old obsolete ships where, say, like the Germans would say build a modern battleship and the British would roll up with a pre-dreadnought battleship or something like that or um, an ironclad battleship or something that 
may not seem that old in comparison to like the victory at Trafalgar, but is so obsolete that it, you're basically asking for death. So the British had to start building up a whole lot of ships, constantly rebuilding and spending an enormous amount of money. Meanwhile, Germany, the United States, uh, some South American countries, a bunch of these other uh, potential belligerents to the British, or whoever really, Japanese as well, Japan, Japan as well, started in putting a lot of money into their own navies with the intention of like, well, if you want to be a world power, you need to have a powerful navy. And the costs of this were ballooning out of control because the ships were getting bigger and more expensive every year. Everyone was worried about that. And only a few countries in the world actually had the sort of economic power to maintain that arms race. And a lot of them, like the United States, had the economic power but didn't really want to take part in it. The British could have done it, done it but didn't want to. The Japanese tried to do it but couldn't. So you had these big... Uh, arms limitation deals to prevent an arms prevent uh, like a Cold War era esque a Cold War esque arms race of occurring from um, with just friggin battleships seems crazy nowadays to think about that but it was a distinct possibility and in fact like things were more than a possibility things were basically already there the designs for new battleships were crazy in the 1920s so a series of arms limitation treaties went into effect to limit the limit this from happening prevent an crazy uh to prevent this crazy out of control arms uh, buildup and the washington and london naval treaties were the result of that now that kind of put a limit put a hold on naval construction because like well what are you gonna do you you don't want to break the treaty because you don't want anyone else breaking the treaty but that also meant that well you're not um you're not advancing i guess so let's take a kind of a look at what we have here so Battleships stopped being built until there was some, I don't know what the clauses were in the treaties, but you couldn't build any new battleships except for certain sums that were already under construction. And every nation could only build things with guns of a certain size, ships of a certain weight and displacement, and only a certain number of them. So a lot of the things that you saw being carried over in the World War II were like, Let's let's take a look at our like Nevada, Arizona, Pennsylvania. Spoiler alert: not all of these make it into World War II, but they are old ass battleships. BB five. I'm trying to build BB eight class ships and BB nine soon. Um, Tennessee, California, Oklahoma, uh, Tennessee, and California a little bit newer. But a lot of these were just older designs, older ships that were just maintained in service that would have been obsoleted a long time ago had that naval arms race been allowed to just spiral out of control. It also sort of um, limited the, I mean, it limited the spending, limited the out of control stuff, and it kind of, in a way, maybe prevented a World War II from occurring in the 1930s or in the early 1930s or the late 1920s because eventually it would have spilled over and somebody would have tried killing somebody else and well a world war would have started infantry division let's start researching some doctrines Uh, I got no good themes for this. So there are limits on what could be built. Now, some could say that the limitations of this treaty had a big part to do with... Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Uh, okay, reinforcements I thought got checked. 
Okay, so something got upgraded, but it wasn't pulling from my manpower pool. So that's that's something at least. <laughs> Some say that these naval treaties actually were a big part in the, a big part to do with Japan getting its sort of um, attacking the United States and all of that. Because Japan was trying to build up their own military, but Japan had fought on the Allied powers side during World War I. But they got their own imperial ambitions seeing what the European powers did in a lot of the um, Asian countries. Japan was never invaded and colonized or anything like that, but they saw what everyone else did and say, like, hey, you know what? We want to do that. Big part of doing that is going and, uh, look, Japan's taken over chunks of China, is to build up their own military and being an island, they needed a powerful navy to secure resources to even get anywhere and defend their own mainland. Problem is with Japan though, they didn't really have the industrial or monetary resources to do that. They did a fantastic job of advancing their own um, advancing their own technology as and inventing their own technology uh, reverse engineering others and then invent, improving it and making their own. But they didn't have the financial or manpower or like uh, otherwise material resources necessary to do it so they dumped an enormous amount of their own gdp into building up their navy but it um it was going to bankrupt the country so it was actually for japan's benefit that they participated in the naval treaties which limited their navy to something like uh, 70 percent of what the united states or the british empire could have on one hand you look at it and go like oh it's limiting their uh their power they're defenseless against say the united states or the british empire it's not really the case the united states wouldn't be able to focus its entire navy on japan in order to destroy it in a war because the united states has to oceans that it borders on. It's got to protect itself on both sides. British Empire, islands all over the damn planet and colonies all over the damn planet. So they couldn't simply uh, uh, concentrate their power entirely on Japan. So Japan's uh, allocation of tonnage and all that kind of stuff was not unreasonable. And plus it prevented them from bankrupting themselves. So, as stupid as it may sound, Japan's uh, military being limited in the 1920s was actually for its own good. And just let this keep going. But, of course, that's not how they saw it. <laughs> and they got more aggressive, I guess, feeling like they had, um, feeling like they had a axe to grind over the situation that they were forced into by the treaties. Assembly line experimentations. China surrendered. Fuck. I guess maybe I should have taken over their military. <laughs> Terms of service bill now. I can put this forward, which will increase manpower significantly, but it's got to get voted in by Congress, so I will try it but it's probably not going to work it will increase manpower significantly and allow me to really build up my military prior to the war starting but you know it's not going to happen I'm kind of hoping this battleship technology gets completed sooner rather than later what do i have as far as up oh, public works i'm going to do a lot of this public works because it does cost money but i will have the money ah shit it disappeared off my menu all right let me pause the game it reduces descent although i don't really have to worry about that and it will cost money but i will have money um but it tends to give me blueprints as well as increasing industrial capacity that's always a plus 
selective. Oh, Congress votes yes. Holy shit. I've never actually seen that happen. Manpower pain change by 2%, 250% of total population. In immediate manpower change. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Oh my god, I got manpower. Oh. It's Oh, I lost a lot of money. <laughs> Issue currency. Money national descent. There we go. All right, I'm going to have to let that go <laughs> cuz I need to get my money back. New technology developed aerial supremacy. That's a that is a um, naval doctrine, actually. I got an assload of manpower. Holy shit! I was not expecting the Selective Service bill to actually go through. It's never gone through for me before. So I've got manpower. Oh, man. Research is stalled. Oh, it's not stalled completely. I just don't have the money to... It's not. It's slowed. It's not stalled out. Um, let's start researching... Um, this kind of shit <laughs> well semi-modern battleship is complete as well so fucking wheat so it is 1938 so historically the war would take another three years to start so I'm gonna It's going to take more than three years to build any battleships. Well, at the moment, it'll it is actually going to take less than that in real life. And so, Iowa class BB nine, boom. Now, will this? I'm not going to put torpedoes on these. I am going to build a bunch of these because uh, it's not going to. I have the manpower to waste. And while I'm at it, let's build out my uh, my carriers a little bit more because I want balls to the walls, maximum firepower when it comes to this shit. Now look at the completion date, January 17th, 1944. The war is practically going to be over by then. I don't have to worry about that so much because eventually um, assembly line experimentation, remember that? Well, that's actually going to be completed sooner rather than later because once uh, tech teams start working faster, <laughs> um, I'll be able to, we'll get closer to its actual completion date and I'll be able to, I will be able to start researching that ship assembly line so that'll decrease the amount of time taking the build and also there will be a kind of um event that i can event that i can choose which will significantly decrease the amount of time necessary to increase the amount of time ne uh, decrease the amount of time necessary to build these things so I'm not going to do this one again. I just want my money. I want to, I want to be in a positive Con convoy trans assembly line experimentation. Oh, some, I got the blueprints for assembly line experimentation. Eventually I was going to get there. All right. So now the research teams are getting the money they need. So that is just skyrocketing now. I'm a little behind on this technology, though, because 
Um, I ran out of money and I... <laughs> I ran out of money like an idiot. <laughs> Anti-submarine warfare technology. Uh, Nimitz. Nimitz. Damn it, I didn't choose anything. So the war will start, and I will definitely be behind Japan in a lot of ways. Although I do... Let me, let me start positioning my garrisons on the smaller islands. Oh, these guys. I didn't move them. Get them over to the Philippines. And get you back. Uh, these are infantry divisions, but these ones here I'm uh maybe I can just redeploy them maybe I don't actually have to move them credit is flowing awesome Okay, uh, this version of the game, I guess I have to transport them properly. Okay, industrial line experimentation is done. So I'm going to put ship, um, even though it's not a naval company, I'm going to keep Ford Motor Company on this because they have most of the stuff needed. vehicle assembly line that'll be for building tanks and shit like that but I'm gonna start researching better radar standard oil for some reason is gonna be <laughs> this looks like the best for researching that Faculty of Nuclear Research. Uh, this is going to stop being something I'm able to do before too long. I mean, that is constantly playing around with the... Um, constantly playing around with the tech tree. Because as the game slows down, it will no longer... Damn it, just... <laughs> it won't be as... It'll take a lot longer to research things. Best in national research. Boom. Invest in national infrastructure. Can't do it. Group disposal, dispersal. All right, so let's build. It's 1939. So let's build some better light cruisers. I want to build better destroyers too. Because you're going to want to have escorts and shit for your bigger, your bigger ships. And light cruisers don't take as long to build as battleships, but uh, what do we got here? Ship assembly line. Awesome. Get that shit. Catch up. Look at that. Boom. Because I really want that because it'll... Well, I'll show you as we get closer to the end of that research line. But it'll... Like, look at this. Battle cruiser time. Negative 273 days battleship time. 
Negative 317 days, nearly a year, is sliced off battleship construction time. So instead of 44, it'll be completed in 43, and it'll actually get completed before then, thanks to um, some other things that'll pop up closer to the war. Now, you can't guarantee that the attack on Pearl Harbor, which uh, historically occurred on December 7th of 1941, you can't guarantee it's actually going to happen at that time. In fact, once I played through the game, and uh, hearts of the standard Hearts of Iron 2 at least, I played through it and it didn't happen at all. Like, the attack never occurred on Pearl Harbor. I never got pulled into World War II as the United States Never got pulled in the World War II. So, like, what do you do then? Well, you just sort of lose the game at that point. You just got to make sure you antagonize Japan a little bit, and then they'll then they'll attack you. <laughs> um, but anyway, the war may start early for you. It may start late for you. So, come 1940, I'm going to start to assume that the attack could occur at any time. Shit's falling apart in Europe. Germany just attacked Poland. Um, at some point, like in 1940 onwards, I'm going to have to suspect that maybe Japan will attack. So, I used to think it was a good idea to, because the attack was going to occur at Pearl Harbor, to not have anything in Pearl Harbor. What are they going to attack if nothing's there? But this game doesn't, like, let you get away with that. It will actually... What did this just research? Um, this game won't actually let you get away with that. It will... It'll take those ships away from you whether you, whether you have them at Pearl Harbor or not. So... It doesn't do you any good to try to hide, like, the Arizona from the Japanese. Although it does seem to be a little bit randomized as far as what you actually lose during that attack. So you may have, like, um... So while you don't necessarily lose every single thing that uh, historically was lost, you may lose more, you may lose less. Who the hell knows? Okay, so ship assembly line experimentation is nearly complete. It's at 98.1%. So look at, say, this battleship here, the Indiana. Estimated to be completed January 18th, 1944. That's assuming that everything continues along perfectly. Look at this. I don't even have enough uh, production um, to build the carriers that I'm trying to build. Hopefully these get completed soon and I can move on. But in a few seconds, it's January, 28th, uh, January 18th, 1944, and March 11th, 1944, 1943, a good, what is that, eight months, seven months or so, sped up. Of course, the ships were already partially complete, so it's not like retroactive to what you've already done. A ship isn't going to just complete because you researched a tech that reduces its construction time. I'm limited by production capacity, so that's why I can't... Uh, all of the things I put into production aren't done yet. Ford Motor Company, industrial. General Electric, IBM, John von Neumann. Uh. Industrial. Let's do um, small arms assembly line. This will do the same thing for ships, but for but um, infantry units. 
I don't need any of this right now. Hmm. Technology is just getting researched left and frickin' right. So this is what, a 1923 technology? Yeah, it's a 28 technology, so it's still obsolete. God, I'm so behind on tank technology. Infrastructure. Uh, infrastructure, infrastructure, no immediate effect otherwise. Uh, what did I, what was that? That was, um, cruisers. All right, that's enough of these for the time being. Although submarines, why the hell not, you know? Everyone loves a good submarine. Americans control French army, invest in research. Yeah, why not? Uh, I'm not going to do this. Ultimatum to Japan. This will definitely result in a... Uh, this will definitely result in a war. <laughs> Okay, so my carriers are complete. This car so these ones down here should be under construction now. Although they're February 17th, 1943. It's, it's still a while into the war. These ones here, November of 40. So assuming the... Assuming the war starts when it historically did, all of these, these battleships here and all of these carriers will be completed. Battleships will not be. Built an investment. Carrier Air Group 1940. Did I, was I researching that? Yes, I am. It'd be nice if I had the plan before I started, but you know, I'll take what I can get. Post-war tank. What do I need for this? I don't know. I'm missing some technology and I don't know what it is. Get our doctor and stuff together. Get Eisenhower on the hospital situation. How much production capacity do I have? A decent amount because consumer goods are way over. Now you can build brigade attachments which allow you to attach like enhancements to your different brigades. Now this doesn't, this isn't just for um, infantry. This can also be for your warships. So, um, so here we go. We have Improved hull, fire control systems, all of that kind of stuff. So I can upgrade some of my old battleships. A little bit, at least. Not really, like, um... Not really, like, make a huge difference, but something. And it doesn't require any manpower. So as long as you have industrial capacity, you might as well slap together a couple of these. And what did I have? What was I? I have one attachment, anti-air, anti-submarine, fire control, improved hull, anti-air. I'm going to use these, make sure that they are good for that. Let's see, what did I have? So I do light cruisers, two attachments, anti-air, fire control. I would kind of like torpedoes on these. <laughs> Do 
they should all be able to be built. Let's build a few. Um, hell, I don't know. Shit. Now, there's a battle cruiser. Because I have the industrial capacity and I do have the manpower. Why the hell not? Eventually, there will be a, there will be a option to sort of mobilize your semi-mobilization for your industry, which will allow you to build a lot of things a lot quicker, but it'll cost you more in terms of resources to build it, which is certainly worth it. You definitely want to let that happen. 39 Air Infantry... In fact, you know what? I'm actually going to, since I have some manpower to spare and I'm not using it for anything, reinforcements and upgrades are going to advanced light cruiser, huh? Was I researching that? Modern destroyer, huh? Hmm. Close air support. That'll be a quick one. I'm building a bunch of destroyers and I got better destroyer technology being researched. As you see, since I put all of my like upgrades and stuff like that into action, my manpower pool is being diminished. Let me freeze time. Oh. Am I at war? I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> attack on Pearl Harbor. Okay, so the attack on... I was just decided to move some stuff around and then the Pearl Harbor attack occurs. All right, so attack on Pearl Harbor occurs. Light casualties, huh? Arizona is removed from the scenario. Oklahoma removed from scenario. Destroyer Division 34 removed from scenario. California strength down 95, West Virginia 95, Nevada 75, Pennsylvania 25, Tennessee 15, Maryland 20, New Orleans 5, Rayleigh 40. Destroyer divisions 50% down, national distance changed by plus 5%? Shit. Manpower minus 10. Policy interventionalism sent to 8. Policy hawk trigger attack on Pearl Harbor success event. Okay. In fact, in fact, general mobilization. This will stockpile, stockpile, manpower changed, an ass load, increase dissident, activate reserves, war propaganda, national descent, manpower increase, money will decrease, women work, descent increase, manpower change 100%. Uh, buy war bonds. I'm not going to do that just yet. I want to get dissident down a little bit. So the war has started, so I will reduce the speed to above normal. Game's paused. So I am going to have to make some moves to defend myself a little bit. So you get some of these ships, like the California took a plastering. It's down to 5% strength. But fortunately, even though it wasn't at Pearl Harbor, it's, it's in San Diego right now. It's going to get repaired. The West Virginia is going to get repaired. The Colorado's here undamaged. I don't think Colorado was at Pearl Harbor. My carrier division here is intact. Lexington, Saratoga, the Langley. I don't know whether Langley is even a part of this game. Langley is not a useful, um, is not a 
tactically or strategically significant thing. It's it's like a test bed. I don't think they even used it during the war. Nevada and Pennsylvania. I'm going to let them get repaired. But I do have some new ships that I can roll out. Not really the kind of stuff that would make for a powerful fleet. A bunch of light carriers. But I'm going to organize all of these into one fleet for the time being. That's a fleet carrier. And then these light cruisers. Heavy cruiser. Boom. And then a couple of destroyer divisions. I'm gonna or I'm gonna collapse them all into one. Then I'm gonna split this up. So two separate fleets, and now let's just assign an admiral. And I'm gonna let them sit here for a little bit and get their organization up. Now, neither of these are incredibly powerful. There are no battleships here. And they're kind of slightly slight carriers and slightly obsolete, um, slightly obsolete fleet carriers. Some somewhat obsolete destroyers and light cruisers. And right, let me get these infantry divisions placed. Not for now, just so I don't forget them later, because I tend to forget things in my deployment pool. And let them get organized anyway. So Japan will attack the Philippines. There's nothing I can do about that. But what I can do something about, though, is defend the Philippines once the attacks occur. So the way this works is the Japanese will probably launch an amphibious assault on however you pronounce this. From this position here, I'll be able to attack them once they land. And they will not be able to retreat. I'm not going not gonna to oppose the landing. But what I will do is once they do land, since they won't be able to land a strong force immediately, I will be able to attack them after they've set up and they won't have anywhere to retreat to. And I will destroy their divisions where they're standing. So that'll be fun. I'm going to take these submarines and put them on just um, convoy raiding in this area around here. I'm not expecting much out of them, but it's a dangerous place to send surface ships, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to get these back to safety before Japan can scramble any kind of um, assault on them. So let's unfreeze time. Taking attrition damage. <laughs> Germany declares war and a bunch of shit. So it's 1940. And this has occurred May of 1940. The Japanese did their thing. That is early. I do need money though, so. National dissident, there we go. Invest in national, um, fund Manhattan project, infrastructure. No, I'm not gonna do that right now. There's a battle. All right, so my... Who is this? These are my destroyers. They're getting fucked up. I didn't get them out in enough time. They're going to get destroyed. They might retreat, but I lost a destroyer division. And a transport. Shouldn't have done this. Should not have done this. Stupid me. 
small arms assembly line. Hmm. Keep going forward. Unfortunately, since the war started a little earlier than I was hoping, a lot of my um, a lot of my ships aren't finished. They're getting close, but it's going to be in September by the time these battleships are ready for service. So I'm not. And the option to accelerate their construction hasn't popped up yet, which I kind of expected it to. Hmm. And I can't fund the Manhattan Project yet. Which, uh, maybe because I don't have enough money. <laughs> uh, though I do need to build up some transports, though. Ah, they, they're attacking my shit. This won't require any manpower, so might as well just build a bunch of them at once. The escorts, though, will. This will keep my uh, far-flung islands in supply. Alright, so let's get this. Let's get a patrol going. Damn it. <laughs> there we go. Damn it. Okay, so I got this fleet set for a naval combat patrol. So just randomly move around here looking for something to skirmish. Unfortunately, it's the only fleet I feel comfortable enough can really do anything like this. Arsenal of Democracy, this is it. This will reduce the... Um, reduce the amount of time necessary to build shit. So, getting over to these battleships that we're going to take until 43 will now be completed in August of 42. Remember, it was in, like, November of 44 that their initial completion was expected. So, it's accelerated quite significantly. Now, they spent a lot of time not being constructed, so... Here we go. Uh, December 19th, 1941. So, still a while. Had things uh, gone historically, I would have all of these Iowa-class battleships ready at the beginning of the war. But since Japan attacked early, I am kind of at a disadvantage. It's going to be a bit. Now, but I, I just got to make sure I pay attention to the Philippines as well as some of these islands here. Because the Japanese will try to take some of these islands. So, do I have... Okay, these are organized. Let me, let me move them forward, rebase them out here. Wake. And where are these transports? Get up here. I'm going to merge these into one fleet. Then I'm going to have this battle going on. Let's... Oh, nope, it's over. <laughs> All right, not enough space. So let's rebase you out to, say, Midway. Where the Japanese take it.
Well, it's going to see transport, but that's fine. I got to watch because time is moving somewhat fast. So I got to be careful about um, about uh, battles going on. I kind of want to see how they play out to know how my my ships do against the Japanese and peacetime economy. Awesome. <laughs> Figured that would have happened already. I need more money to fund the Manhattan Project, though. American control. Close air support. 1934. Let's start researching strategic bombers. The war was won in a sense. Uh, the goal that I'm really after when it comes to bombers would be the um, B-29 Super Fortress, 1945 technology. This game kind of simplifies the development of that because the B-29 was an amazingly advanced aircraft for World War II. So advanced that it, it, I kind of like, if I didn't know that it was a thing in World War II, I would have uh, figured it was more of a Cold War technology. Like something out of the 50s rather than the 40s. Because it, it was so much more advanced. Higher ceiling, longer range, pressurized cabin, everything. Um, okay, go to. Just so much more advanced than anything anyone else had. That it's amazing. Alright, so we are looking at a battle. Now they actually do have me outnumbered quite significantly here. But not quite as bad as it looks, although it is pretty bad. Um, I'm going to lose this battle. You can see there's a red line here and a green line. The red line is the attackers, I guess, or whatever. I don't know. It's Japan right now. And the only ships that are in range to actually engage in a fight are these three uh, fleet carriers on the Japanese side and the two fleet carriers on my side. So the Akagi, the Kaga, and the Soyu. The Soyu is a more advanced carrier. That's unfortunate that it's, that it's here. Compared to my Lexington and Saratoga, which are actually just sort of battle cruiser conversions. And then the Langley is here, but the Langley doesn't work. So it's not, it's out of range. It's not winning, not going to fight. All these other ships are outside of weapons range. So they're just, even though they have battleships here and battle cruisers and heavy cruisers and light cruisers and destroyers they're not participating in the fight right now fortunately i do have this other fleet with the enterprise the princeton independence which are going to join the fight in a few seconds but it's the battle is not going my way at the moment and oh my god i'm losing everything the feat i lost the Langley, the Lexington, the Saratoga, and a destroyer division. God, that sucks. Now, what happens when the Enterprise gets into this fight? The battle's already over, but it'll be a separate battle. There we go. So, let's look at this one. Now, this one's more of an even fight. Because I have... Street carriers, they got... There's, they still have the advantage here, but they may not. Oh, no, they're still at full strength. Oh, they may win this war to this battle, too. Oh, my God, they're wrecking me. Oh, my God, I'm getting wrecked. I lost the Enterprise. And they sunk that last destroyer division. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I'm losing. Do I not have enough naval doctrine researched? Not really. Uh, advanced computing machine, at least. I got that. This is not working out well for me. I knew it was going to be a problem then starting the, starting the war so early. It was not going to work out for me. Wake Island is under attack. There was nothing really there. So they've just had huge victory after huge victory. Just huge victories. 
just enormous victories and I couldn't do anything about it. Now, stay here. Stay here. Okay, so this is what I was talking about before. The Japanese have made their landing. Now, it's probably not that significant of a landing yet. So I could potentially drive them out now. So this is a... Seven units against seven. Although my technology is obsolete, so they may... This may not work. Yeah, they, they're, it's not going to work. I was hoping the war would start later. <laughs> Hoping the war would start later. How are these battleships getting coming along? Mm -hmm. Anyway, how's my economy turning along? Okay, so I can lose that battle but not lose the units because I was the attacker and how oh, the battle's still going on. Um, no, but it ended. I will drive them out, though. I'm not going to let this stand. These, uh... These infantry units are going to advance forward and I'm going to attack. Because I really, I really want these dead. Get up there. Now they can't retreat anywhere because they only have this territory so far. So even though Tulago is right here and it's not occupied, they can't retreat to that position. These are, this is a garrison. Okay, so... Hopefully they don't reinforce any. And I can build up the strength here before I... Uh... Alright, let's just do it now. So I have 10 to 7. Now unfortunately I still have obsolete technology for a lot of these units. So these divisions... Oh, they're trying to they're trying to advance. I was hoping to have better technology rolled out for them, but I didn't get it. Best in come on, Manhattan Project. I need money. Is there anything about war bonds? I should be able to... War bonds. Am I actually at war with Germany right now? Because there's a possibility that I'm not. Nope. I'm not at war... With Germany. That sometimes happens. You don't... Um, you don't end up at war with Germany because Germany doesn't... Uh, is not particularly belligerent against you. Oh, you know what? I'm not... That's why I'm not winning. They're not getting upgraded because it... I thought I checked these. I guess I didn't. <laughs> God, I'm an idiot. Alright, upgrade. <laughs> Motherfuckers, upgrade. Upgrade and rebuild.
I remember what I was saying a while ago is that you needed to make sure that you check these to make sure that you upgraded. Well, I checked these, but not these. So it didn't work properly. And I wasn't getting the upgrades that I needed in place. So now, oh, Japan's on the move. Hmm. Get your shit together. They were out of supply too because I wasn't supplying them. Oh man, I clusterfucked this whole game. And every, and my my fleets were probably out of supply too. That's probably why they got their asses kicked. Man, I cannot believe how stupid I've been. Okay, so they're attacking here, so I might as well attack now to help to at least prevent them from attacking, from winning. Man, they have really uh, reinforced this. They have 15, 15 uh, units in this region, so I may lose the Philippines too. See, uh, if you ever, if any Japanese people want to go back in time and win the war against the United States, <laughs> they, I did stop them from winning the, uh, their attack though. Just attack early. <laughs> if anybody who knows the future <laughs> is, uh, present, you will, uh, you will get the drop on them. <laughs> and if they're dumb enough to not, not have reinforcements in for their not have reinforcements set up, then, you know. All right, so these ships weren't getting repaired until now. Oh, I won in Manila. Oh, they attacked Manila because they surrounded us. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Okay, what I'm doing now is they were they were moving from this region to to this one. So I had the chance of I had the chance that I could potentially uh route them because they were reduced strength because half of them were split between the different between the different uh provinces come on you guys need to get your strength back up I need you back out there attacking like now these are just fighter wings I got nothing to do oh shit uh, destroyers technology is researched Oh, uh, now destroyers. Let's get some better destroyers. 304 days to develop. Almost a year. What do I have that's almost finished? A few, a couple battleships should be finished in a month. Some destroyers finished a. Uh, uh, heavy uh, fleet carriers, a bunch of fleet carriers. Those are in a year. My stupid ass <laughs> making mistakes. Now, if I can, if I can drive them, 
if they're going in there, they'll be cut off and they, they'll be out of supply. So that's why I'm so damn determined. I'm so damn determined. Oh man, they got this way over reinforced. It's what I get when I lose sea supremacy, which is why it's important to have a navy. <laughs> Best I can do is maybe dig in and hope they don't overwhelm the Philippines. They don't get the whole Philippines because taking it back will be a pain in the ass. I know Douglas MacArthur back during World War II was absolutely determined to retake the Philippines. But um, strategically, it... Oh, shit. Look at that. I'm going to lose the Philippines completely. What's, what is this battle? <laughs> yeah, I'm losing the Philippines completely. Shit. And I can't ret retreat them because... Uh, I damn, the fucking war just started too early. I was talking about the war starting earlier and that could potentially being a problem, but I failed to do anything about it like an idiot. All right, let's... Uh, some technology was developed. I, um, I'm about to stop playing the game anyway, because the, this video is going to go on for too long, but I think you get the point. I'm bad at this, but I think you get the point. Um, I can't attach brigades here. Definitely have them built. Oh, okay, here's the things that I can attach this brigade attachment at uh, Capital Anti-Air. It's important that your ships get this shit. <laughs> As you can see by the number of aircraft carriers that I have lost. You want to be able to shoot planes down. But this, this video has been going on for a while, so I'm about to end it. Let me... Damn it. Oh, look, the British are out here. Oh, my phone's ringing. I'm losing the Philippines. Normally, this goes a lot better for me, I have to admit. This usually goes a lot better for me. It's the best fleet that I can put together. <laughs> it's pathetic. It's been a while since I played this game, so maybe this is why. Yeah, I'm going to lose everything. Um, they're going to... They're retreating to Manila. They're going to get surrounded and just slammed. And I can't get them out of here. I only have one transport here that's going to get one out. It's going to get sunk while trying to retreat. So I'm done. I'm definitely going to win the war, but it's going to take hours of playing the game to do it. Not like not since honestly not since the first time I played the game have I actually lost any of these. So it's and the first time I played the game, it was really just because I didn't realize I had to win the war against the Soviet Union as well. And I didn't have enough time to really... I, they had taken over Eastern Europe, and I didn't have enough time to go to war with them, although I tried. Didn't have enough time to go to war with them properly, and... Um, oh, look, I sunk a couple of destroyers. Actually won a battle. <laughs> What kind of results were there? All right, so full complement of fighters, no damage. Oh, that was just an outright win for me. Sunk a couple of destroyer flotillas, no damage whatsoever. 
Uh, this is a Japanese island now. All right, so there's a battle. Oh, sunk a heavy cruiser. Fantastic. One another fight. Full complement of fighters and bombers. No damage to my ships. It's, it's floating around with some destroyers. There's another battle. Oh, nope. That was just my land battle. Finally managed to put together some wins with... Uh, finally managed to put together some wins. Another one. What did this... What was this researching? <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. It was a doctrine, wasn't it? Yeah, I know. I'm going to lose the Philippines. They're trying to... Oh, well, they're probably going to try... I think they've taken some of the... The islands like Wake. I think I lost Wake. Because I didn't. I was actually trying right as Pearl. Right as Pearl Harbor was attacked. That's what I was actually going to do. I was going to transport some soldiers onto Wake. To defend it. But the war started and that kind of screwed me up. I definitely thought I had at least six months. Which goes to so. I mean. I lost everything in the Philippines. The Philippines are just lost to me now. Although, um, yeah, I just completely, I mean, this is technically my territory still. Let's, uh, let's get these planes out of here before I lose them too. Get them over at Guam, where at least I won't lose these fighter wings. They're interceptor wings. Oh, okay. My uh, my battleships are finished. In this game, battleships are not tremendously useful. In fact, in a sense, you can actually do better in this game by building cruisers instead of battleships. But, you know, battleships are awesome. So let's do what we shouldn't do. <laughs> so how are we looking? Pennsylvania has been repaired. Or was the Pennsylvania not damaged? I don't fucking know. <laughs> Colorado and the Maryland. Let's let's detach Colorado and the Maryland. This fleet is in good shape. Nevada, Pennsylvania. I'm gonna let that get. So the Colorado and the Maryland were Colorado class battleships, which are the the last battleships the U.S. managed to build before the before the um, naval treaties kicked in and sort of prevented further design development. As a result, though, they were the most advanced. They were still slow, but they were reasonably well armored. But they had big-ass guns, and that's what they were so good for. In fact, they had guns that were not terribly dissimilar from the ones that you see on the North Carolina or the Washington here. Let's see what they're... Um, maybe I can see it in the economy screen. Oh, wait, no, I can't. <laughs> but anyway, they sh still should be somewhat useful weapons. Although not uh, not the world beaters they were designed to be. Oh, look, my uh, fleet carriers are almost finished. Meaning I'll actually be able to build out some slightly diversified fleets. <laughs> 
Where are my destroyers? These are a little ways off. December. So maybe I shouldn't deploy these right away. Hmm. It's got battle stars. Experience, I guess. It's a little bit risky sending this out. Like this, but you know, Wasp Hornet, Exus, X, X, Essex, Intrepid. This should actually be enough for me to really put a hurting on the Japanese. What else do I have here? West Virginia, let's... Let's get the West Virginia out of here. And take the rest of this fleet. Push it to Pearl Harbor. Now rebase to Pearl Harbor. Sometimes you got to choose it out of a out of a list, which is a pain in the ass. What else did I have here? What I'm looking for are escort ships. I don't necessarily want a whole fleet full of battleships and carriers because that is um, a fantastic way to lose your ships. What I want to do is send out some escorts out here to Pearl Harbor and to uh, Midway so I can start building, assembling together with the stuff I already sent out, more powerful fleets, and then use them to start patrolling the ocean for the Japanese Navy. All right, so here we go. I got these sitting out here. All right, fine, just move out there. Do you have any technology that is... So I'm not going to wait for those destroyer divisions to be completed because it'll, it won't take that long, but it will take longer than I feel like waiting because <laughs> I kind of want to end this video. I just kind of want to show that I can actually win this game. <laughs> All right, let's get both of these fleets out to outside of Pearl Harbor. Delay Doctrine. Um, I guess I should focus on naval combat because I don't, I'm not going to have all my army divisions wiped out. So I'm not going to have any land battles for a little while. Come on. Guam is under attack. Now they will... Fortunately... I am going to try to repel. Well, I mean, I don't really have a choice. There's nowhere to retreat to on Guam. So their landing is going to be opposed. And it's actually pretty difficult to do an amphibious landing in this game. So they'll attack, and I'll repel the attack. They have more advanced technology, but I, and I have more divisions. They do have marine divisions, which are good for assaulting like this. But, I mean, as let's just see the time tick away. I'm probably going to win that fight. Because you got to do, like, a lot of damage 
to knock something like that off. All right, so all of my fleets are in position. Let's... All right, these are just destroyers, and so you go up there. Let's get two of you out of here. You go up there. And they will organize a... Oh, no, they're missing there. Where are they? All right, so... Where are my battleships? Japan annexed the Philippines. So let's split... One of the Colorados and one of the North Carolinas off to join that fleet. All right, so two improved Yorktown class carriers, North Carolina class battleship, a Colorado class battleship, and a number of smaller ships. You know what, I can probably afford to, since I don't have, am I missing a battleship? January 24th, that's going to take a little bit of time. These are going to be a little bit too. All right, so maybe I should send, hmm. What am I missing here? I'm just going to make two fleets instead of the three that I was planning on. Because I do have some in reserve over on the west coast. That when my last of my battleships are complete, then I will organize them. So here we go. We have this one. We have three fleet carriers, two light carriers, two battleships, a North Carolina and a Colorado. And this Nevada class battleship, the Pennsylvania, which is older still. Some heavy cruisers, like a little bit of one light cruiser division, one light cruiser destroyer divisions. Let's get these uh, transports out of here. They are really going to limit my range. Send them back to the west coast. And get them, this fleet based at a midway. Rebase you the Johnston. And I will patrol the ocean with these two fleets here. Now, this is not going to just sweep the ocean clean of the Japanese Navy. They still have an advantage. But it will hold them at bay. Keep them from just taking over the whole goddamn ocean before I can uh, do anything with uh where are my flotillas i had a fleet in late take off that was under attack oh shit you know what those ships that were here got dislodged I'm an idiot. I wasn't paying attention. I got some heavy cruiser and two destroyer divisions over here. Germany's gone doing some crazy shit. All right, so Guam was defended. I'm actually going to take this fleet and push it up to Guam. And then get these out of there. Exchange them. 
Uh, they may get destroyed on the way out. I really shouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. A heavy cruiser and two destroyer divisions will not stand up to, like, a carrier strike. Submarine divisions, once they're at Guam, maybe they can... Uh, Maybe they can reorganize and I can start doing some convoy raiding with them, but... Jeez, look at the dangerous route this fucker's taken. <laughs> but anyway, what did I have up here? You, I'm expecting to do a combat patrol... In this area, because, you know, that's what you're for. Fuck some shit up. Now, I gotta pay attention to make sure if there are any battles that I can, uh, that I'm in a position to view it so I know what's going on. I can't fund the Manhattan Project yet. I don't have the money. <laughs> I blew all my money right before, right before the war started. Now, something that the way that this game has a little bit of a quirk about it, given everything's based off of provinces and in the ocean, the provinces are enormous because they're not really land. Something you can do is take a fleet and just position it right here. Now, this is a very strategically, I mean, in a battle immediately. But this is a very strategically significant place just to put a fleet. Because anything that is within this range will immediately be caught up in a battle with the fleet that you positioned there. And, well, as you can see, it's a battle which I have an enormous advantage with. I have four, uh, three fleet carriers, two light carriers, um, three battleships, some heavy cruisers, destroyers, all that shit. What do they have? One battleship. One heavy cruiser, one light cruiser, some destroyer divisions, and a bunch of transports. A bunch of transports. They can't fire. They can't defend themselves. So if... I can manage to wipe out these, and they, they, they're out of range. The only ships that are in range for this are my fleet, are all of my carriers. So essentially, they can't defend themselves properly. So this battle could go up. Oh, okay, I drove them off. Didn't destroy them, though. You know what I should actually do? Through the combat patrol, get over here, because this is another strategically significant place to just position a fleet. Here, the same thing will happen. Also, up here would be a good place. Once I can get a third fleet in position, maybe I'll just position that here. But every time they try to reinforce these islands, or try to take Guam, they will find themselves under attack. And this is consolidated into a single group. This is a somewhat of an overwhelming force. The only problem with positioning this out here is it's a little bit of a distance away from its home port. So if it gets beaten, it'll have to retreat a long way. And you lose some fuel organization and all that kind of stuff at that kind of distance. They got away. I don't think they did any damage. I didn't lose anything, though. No damage to me. No loss of fighters. Okay, so hold position there. All right, I'm in a fight. All right, so it was in the same position. I sunk a transport, which hopefully, hopefully had um, infantry division on it. And it wasn't just empty. But as you see, my positioning there has already started to pay off. Now, how am I looking with these battleships I kept behind getting repaired not finished but they're getting repaired
the Japanese can't rebuild their navy as quickly as I can. So, like, look at all this shit I got built here. I mean, I can't use it right now, which is a problem. I eventually will be able to. But, okay, so another battle happened. I wasn't able to see it, but I sunk two transport flotillas. Another fight in the Marianas. You see, it's the same fleet that keeps getting caught up in here. Or actually, you know what? This one's missing its battleships. But I'm definitely winning. They can't defend themselves. Drove them off. No ships sunk. Submarine divisions are... ready to go. So I'm going to send them out for a convoy raiding. I right, sunk a transport. Let's move you over a little bit. This might be a little bit of a better position. Because this one hasn't had any fights yet. Ideally, I'd like to have two, uh, the three fleets, one here, one here, one here, and plus a Fourth, which just sort of hangs around in the area, sunk two more transports, that hangs out in the area and relieves a damaged fleet to go back to port and recoup their strength. But I don't have that ability just yet. Yes, let's do this. Come on, battle. I need more money. A lot more money. Surprised this fleet hasn't gotten into a fight yet. This one's seen plenty of action, but the others haven't. Come on. Oh, there's a fight. Sunk a transport. They end sometimes so quickly. And like sometimes I just like to be able to see what happens, but I can't. <laughs> now what I can do is use a this Saipan here. There's a naval base here. And I bet what I'm doing is I'm engaging ships that are coming out of that port. What I can do is a carrier strike on port. But that is potentially dangerous. I'm going to do it just because, I mean, I'm not going to play this game till the end. So look at this. Yeah, they have a lot of ships here. Battleships, cruisers, destroyers, transports. And air raid report. No ships sunk. But I took they took some damage to their naval base. Um... I've taken no damage to my fleet yet, though, so that's a plus. Uh, strategic Bomber 39. I should probably research some more fighters, although I'm not building any just yet. Up, oh, see, my fleet retreated for some reason. Oh, because organization fell. It's got a re regroup organization. So you have strength and you have organization and then for some of these things you have fuel. Organization falls below a certain point. You, it, your units stop functioning properly. So like, let's say even if I have a, even if I have a, um, oh, I lost no damage, no significant damage though. I have a carrier that can should be able to defend itself against an airstrike. Without enough organization, it simply won't be able to. 
So it lost organization and then it retreated back to port and it's regrouping organization and then it, it's moving back out and it's launching its carrier strike again. And then it, it wandered straight into a fight where I sunk a uh, significant victory. I sunk the Issei, which was a battleship, uh, destroyer division and a light cruiser. But there's still another battle going on. My carriers. I don't know where the rest of my ships are, but my carriers are in this fight. And I sunk a heavy cruiser. Alright, so you stop your mission. Sit there and regain your strength. I guess it'll take a little bit longer and while not in port, but you know, it'll be fine. You. You come down here. Oh, okay. There was a battle up here. Sunk a, sunk a light cruiser. See, this is generally how the, the war in the Pacific, the naval war in the Pacific goes for me in a lot of these games, where I take strategic positions and I just sort of hold them and I entice the Japanese Navy to attack or try to move through the reinforce or something like that. And I just whittle them down through a long game of attrition. Rather than taking naval combat patrols right up against the Sea of Japan there. I um, It works. It takes a little while. The war should not have even have started yet, but I've been in a war for a year now. I'm just making sure that my carriers aren't getting reduced in strength, losing planes and all that. You can actually look at these individual ships and see who they've killed. So this one has sunk two. This carrier sunk two transports so far. One transport and one heavy cruiser. This battleship, on the other hand, has sunk nothing. And they've probably never even gotten the range. So, you know, uh, this one sunk a number of transports, the Issei and a destroyer division, the Essex did. It's not an Essex class carrier, ironically, <laughs> but it's gotten a number of kills. It doesn't have any notable experience yet. 12 transports. Those are, um, oh, the Hayuga, a battleship was sunk. Up here. See, ah, yeah, it did make sense to put a fleet up here. Although I will note that my, um, this light carrier has taken significant damage. So, I am, it's also lost most of its air group, which wasn't huge to begin with. So, I'm going to have it rebase in Guam. Or just move there. And just recoup its strength so it's not destroyed for no good reason. But now you can see how I would actually win this war. So you take out you take out the um, you take out the Japanese navy, then you start taking their islands. Now by the time you reach the point where you can start invading Japan, you'll have nukes. You can force a surrender that way. Nuke part one of their drop an atomic bomb on one of their provinces and invade. The Fuso sunk the Fuso. That was a battleship. At the cost of... Oh, well, the Intrepid took damage and lost a big chunk of its flight group. All right, there's another one I'm going to detach. Force their surrender that way. They'll... they'll be ready to surrender once you take one of their provinces, usually anyway. Then you turn to focus on to you turn focus on to Germany. Now Germany is not at war with me, which is actually pretty significant. 
since they're not at war with me, they're not in a position to... Uh, I'm not attacking them, and I'm not putting a lot of effort into helping the Soviet Union. So what will probably happen, although I'm not going to guarantee this, what will probably happen is that Germany will kick the Russians' ass. Now, historically, that did in fact happen. The Nazis did kick the shit out of the Soviet Union. Eventually, though, the Soviet Union was able to turn the tables and push into Germany. Germany has most of Europe here, but they'll take a big chunk of the Soviet Union. And until you join the war against Germany, the Soviet Union may not be able to put up a strong fight. Don't support the Soviet Union, though. Don't give them resources or anything like that to ensure that this happens. Because remember, you don't want the Soviets to win the war. As God, it's, not, it's so callous. It's so callous to just say, let them get their ass kicked by the Nazis. It's not real, though. It's not real. Once you do declare war on Germany, you have a few different options on how you can go to war against them. Well, now, what happened historically, though, there were some incursions into Italy, but you didn't get the strong foothold in Europe until, until you had the um, amphibious invasion of uh, Normandy. So it was in northern France. You had amphibious assault there, the five beaches or whatever it was. And then you, they, the United States, um, the British Empire, Canada, all started pushing further and further into German-held territory. The Germans being split between the Soviet Union and the Allies' assault in northern France really helped with the Soviet Union pushing forward. Now, you can do that, although the Germans are going to put up one hell of a defense uh, blockading northern Europe. A softer target is actually Italy, or maybe some of these countries over here. You don't really know what the war is, what it's going to look like over here. So some of these over here, I might be able to land something on and then start pushing into Europe from there. The problem is, though, that Germany doesn't, while well, Germany itself doesn't really have much of a navy to defend its beaches with, the same can't be said for Italy. Now, Italy's navy is not especially strong, but it is concentrated in the Mediterranean, which allows it to really concentrate its force against you as you try to push in. So, and I don't know, maybe depending on how the game plays out, France's navy might be on their side as well. So while Italy, or the southern end of um, Europe in the Mediterranean may present a softer target as far as an actual amphibious assault goes. In fact, the, the British, there's a good possibility that the British will actually hold a sort of a... Phone's ringing. Might actually hold some territory there that you'd be able to land your forces in and then help them push out. It's a softer target, but you have to worry about the Italian Navy. Now, once all of this shit is built, there's no Navy in the world that will be able to hold up against me. None. And it'll be a couple of years, really, before I'm able to push into there or I will even try. And from that point forward, what you want to do is just as quickly as you can, just get territory before the Soviets can. So if I, if the Germans end up getting all of this shit, and I attack from here, just cut north. Cut north and cut the Soviets off. And then take out <laughs> take out the Germans. But I'm not going to make it that far in this playthrough because it'll take a long ass time. Just a long ass time. Alright, the Intrepid's got to get repaired. This is going to up this battle. Up, oh, sunk two transports again. So I've 
since I've turned, I've started using more intelligent tactics and my shit's in repair and in supply and all that kind of stuff. I really, I really botched the earlier parts of this game. Since then, however, I've done, had nothing but win after win. Now I've taken some damage to some of my ships, but that can be repaired. I haven't lost anything. The loss of a fleet carrier takes a while to repair. To, to replace a fleet carrier, even a light carrier, still takes a while. Now it'll take a bit of time to repair them, but not nearly as long as building one. So as long as I can prevent them from the rest of the fleet from taking an enormous amount of damage and forcing them to retreat, they can get back out there and fight sooner rather than later. I'll just basically be slowly wiping out, slowly through attrition, taking out the Japanese fleet. Whereas I'm going to lose as few ships as possible. So in Marianas, I won a battle. Just got to make sure I didn't lose anything significant. I did not. In fact, I'm still at full strength. Dutch Harbor has been lost to Japan. Oh, shit. Really? Eh. It's the transport. They took Dutch Harbor. Wasn't expecting that. The man pants Indochini from the Vichy. Vichy were um, were in the Nazis' hands. I wonder why there's such a. Okay, so Nevada is repaired. Let's move that forward. West Virginia still needs some work. Tennessee and California. The California still needs a little bit of work. But we're making our way there. These are just transports. Destroyer divisions can now be deployed. Aw. Some. Look at all these. <laughs> Look at all this shit. They're not the more advanced destroyers that I'm trying to build. But they are still pretty good. Damn it, so many. What I can do with these is either supplement the destroyer divisions I have up there, or it might actually end up doing is sort of replacing the destroyers that are replacing the destroyers that are already out here. And just uh, because these are just more powerful, they have longer range, they can do more. Or I could use them as the basis for the, when I start my other ships are finished, I can. November 41. Oh, it's still. A... Oh, this battleship's almost finished. January 24th, it's the 4th now. Yeah, these are more advanced destroyers, but they're not finished. They're not, it's going to take a bit of time, six months or five months or so. Destroyers don't take much time at all, but it's still not an immediate turnaround. How are these? See, sunk two more transports. Yeah, I mean, organization is up, but they still need to be repaired. And their flight groups have been reconstituted, so they're... Uh, not this one, though. This one's still got a few more. I don't want to put them back out until they have much more repaired their own damage.
All right, these are obsolete, but you know, it's something. Battleship's almost finished. Time is ticking away so slowly. July. August. That fleet in the Marianas is getting into so many fights. And remaining at full strength, too. It's the fleet up north that is taking uh, taking losses. Strength 45. Come on. Repair. <laughs> 46. Victory. Oh, my God, no. It's considered a victory, but I lost the Colorado. Like I said before, though, the Colorado is not was an obsolete design. It wasn't the most powerful battleship in the world. But I would rather have not lost it. Ah, damn it. Organization is down to nothing on the Yorktown. It's lost some fighters. Okay, so... As much as I hate to say it, it's time to send this back to port it was a good place to hold but I lost my battleship one of my carriers is damaged lost part of its flight group it needs to get its shit together maybe I should move this fleet up because this one's doing better But, you know. But anyway, it's it's a delay. I lost a battleship I didn't want to lose. But it wasn't a vital, absolutely vital ship for my plans. I have to get the West Virginia here. Another Colorado class that's almost repaired that can take its place pretty soon south dakota can be deployed so that's a that's a more powerful battleship that is now complete i can roll out in the service take its place with that this one's even better so you know it's not the end of the world and i sunk a number of battleships and i sunk a number of cruisers light cruisers carriers oh, i don't know if i sunk any carriers but I definitely did a lot more damage than I've been taking since I got my shit together. So the attrition needle has... See, I'm sinking more transports. A destroyer. Vision. Flotilla. Especially this fleet here, which is managing... To sink ship after ship. Look at all this. This is just what the Essex sank. Ship after ship and not taking any damage. A lot of these are just transports. Transports themselves don't take very long to build. But hope they may have they may have had um, uh, even this light car this light carrier managed to sink a heavy cruiser. Two heavy cruisers, a light cruiser, and destroyer flotilla. Hell, even this battleship managed to sink a transport. How did something get within range of a battleship, though? Hmm. Upgrade not possible. 
<laughs> Whatever. Another fight, another win. Although no sinkings, just drove them off. So the game kind of slows down. So look at this. It's just the destroyers and transports that they're trying to get in and out of these islands is all that's really happening. Which is why the ones up here suffered, the fleet I had up here suffered more damage because it was more uh, combat units were rolling through. All right, so. That's not repaired yet, but let's get. Let's get that battleship out here. I'm going to send it out without an escort like an idiot, but. Take its place. Okay, so uh, that guy I had researching the nuclear stuff, he's gone. But I do have Robert Oppenheimer, who's better. So there's that. Now, if I could fund the damn Manhattan Project, <laughs> I'd get this technology even faster. Oh, Croatia. Side with Germany, I think. <laughs> Yeah, I'm on now. Battleship's actually slowing the fleet down. Maybe it's one of the reasons why I was uh, it got sunk is because that Colorado was slow. Maybe I could move this fleet up and have it do its thing up here. Get some more high-profile kills. Well, I don't have anyone else in the area. Paris taking you forever. Well, all I'm already in a fight, although I didn't see with what. <laughs> all right, again another fight, just a light cruiser, which. I sank. Oh, there were two light cruisers. One of them was sank by the time I clicked on the battle. See, I'm not taking any damage here. So far, anyway. But I'm getting me some kills. Look at all these kills. Alright, so you get the point. I'll eventually win this battle, this war, by slowly grinding on the Japanese Navy, and then I'll throw a lot of force into taking some of these islands. I'll get nukes and nuke my way onto the Japanese mainland. They will surrender. I'll turn my aggressions onto the Germans. The Germans will not surrender, but they will um, hopefully do a good job fighting against the Soviets to prevent the Soviets from getting too much. Now, since the game ends in 66 instead of 46, like the original version of the game, version of this game, I'll have plenty of time to fight the Soviets if I have to later. And by that point, though, the Soviets will not stand a chance to get me. My, my military will be built up so fucking high that no one will be able to stand against me, and I will just bomb the shit out of them and then, but whatever. <laughs> I was definitely never going to play through this entire campaign, though, for this video because it was just too damn long. <laughs>